I used to be in charge of the visa section at the CIA's consulate at Jeddah, the principal city of the Hejaz in western Saudi Arabia. There, for a year and a half, I issued visas to terrorists recruited by the CIA and its asset, Osama bin Laden. At the time, I thought it was basically visa fraud. Somebody was paying $2,500 bribes to State Department officials. I was ordered by these same high State Department officials to issue the visas, to shut up, to do my job, and ask no questions. And this wasn't simply a difference of opinion, as was alleged later on. Uh, it wasn't one of these things where they wanted to visit their father in America, there was a question of where they worked, that sort of thing. It was basically two Pakistanis came to me one day and said, we want to go to a trade show in America. And I asked, what's the trade show? They didn't know. <laughs> what city is it going to be held in? They didn't know. And I asked a few more questions, and I said, no, visa denied. You haven't proved to me that you're going to come to the United States, accomplish your business, and then return home. Well, a few minutes later, I had a phone call from a CIA case officer assigned to the commercial section. Issue the visas. And I said, no. And he said, well, it's important they get a visa. And I said, no. And a few minutes later, he was over talking to the chief of the consular section. Reversed me, issued the visas, and these guys took off. And this was typical. I had a Sudanese who was unemployed in Saudi Arabia. He was a refugee from the Sudan. And I said, you don't get a visa. And he kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And after a bit, I started getting calls from a woman I believe was a case officer who was in the political section. We need this guy. And I said, no. He hasn't proved to me that he's going to America and he's going to come back, as the Immigration and Nationality Act says, and as the State Department's Foreign Affairs Manual says. Well, short order, I got reversed again, and he got his visa for national security reasons. And this went on for a year and a half. I had people, not every day perhaps, but every week, and uh, maybe as many as 100 people uh, got visas uh, through me getting overruled on my analysis of their ability to go to the United States and return. And I protested this. I protested to the Counselor for Consular Affairs in Riyadh. I protested to the Bureau of Consular Affairs in Washington. I protested to the State Department's Inspector General. I protested to the, protested to the State Department's Office of Diplomatic Security. I talked about this to the FBI, to the Justice Department's Office of Professional Responsibility, and I went to a couple of congressional committees. And by and large, I was told, shut up. Uh, you don't know what you're talking about. This is a difference of opinion. You don't know what you're doing. You're far too junior to question the, uh, the Consul General in uh, Jeddah's uh, interest in doing this. He's a guy that was seen sitting in his office filling out visa application forms for Pakistanis with forged passports. He wanted visas for Libyans who had no ties to our consular district whatsoever. And I came back to Washington uh, after a trip to Germany, and uh, I was assigned to the Bureau of Intelligence and Research in the State Department. And eventually my appointment was canceled. After this, and after I tried mightily for several years to find out what had happened to me, and the Freedom of Information Act requests were being stonewalled on the basis of national security, I ran across the journalist Joe Trento, and about the same time, I ran across two people, one of whom was a uh, government official, and another one was a person attached to a local university here in Washington. All three confirmed that what I was protesting was not visa fraud, but people being rounded up by the agency and Osama bin Laden to come to the United States for training as terrorists to be sent to fight in the war against the then Soviet Union in Afghanistan. They used roughly a million dollars in liquor sales a year from the consulate in Jeddah to fund this. And you might ask, well, as the Washington Legal Times did, that was then, this is now, 15 years later. Well. From what I read in the Los Angeles Times, 
15 of the 19 people who f allegedly flew airplanes into buildings in the United States got their visas from the same CIA consulate at Jeddah. And according to a uh, journalist in Florida, Sidney Friedberg, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, they got this through the Visa Express program where you handed in your documents and they packed them off in a bunch of uh, other documents, people traveling to the States for a legitimate reason with a legitimate travel agency. Well, Severino Castillo, the former DEA officer, told me this was common practice for the CIA in Central America. They put their guys in, hoping that the paperwork would be overlooked, that they wouldn't get too many questions asked. And when I raised this, with the Los Angeles Times, with the New York Times, with the Washington Post, with 60 Minutes, nobody wanted to talk about it. But Covert Action Quarterly printed my article on the hand that rules the visa machine rocks the world. Uh, Unclassified, the Journal of the Association of National Security Alumni, printed a couple of articles I had done on the links between the State Department and the CIA. The agency assigns its people to virtually every section of every consulate and diplomatic post in the world. They routinely troll visa applications. They look to see who's coming to America, either to recruit them or to find out how they can get next to them and get some information from them, or to steer them for their own purposes. But nobody in Washington, D.C. wants to hear about this. Nobody in Washington, D.C. wants to hear about the CIA and its assigning case officers to the consular section. There was a guy in with me who would say, when there's a line of people in front of us, Mike, let me take this guy in line. He's one of my people. So I really think the organization Unanswered Questions has a lot of questions to ask, and it deserves answers to them from the government. Thank you.